Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Suchit Anand. I'm originally from India. I'm working at the University of Nottingham, and I would like to give a, share some experiences about our open geospatial science uh, network we have been building over the last basically two years, really. So just uh, you know where, where we come from, and we started. You know, our whole mission is to make geospatial education accessible to all, and that was why you know in two years back we started on this uh, in this journey. And why why was it, why was it important? Because uh, you know I, I myself knew you know very few universities in poor countries, developing countries, could afford could run uh, geospatial science courses. And even now it's only slightly changing, but now it's uh, changing rapidly. And the biggest reason was the high cost of uh, software, proprietary software, and this costs thousands of pounds uh, each license, and so it's very uh, expensive for you know for universities in uh, poor countries to even to think about. Uh, you know, teach the students uh, geospatial science. And geospatial science is like mapping, you know, all the things on uh, 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 computer-based mapping and things like that. And we, again, there is a lot of other reasons, you know, lack of skilled staff, and also lack of freely available training materials. So you need to have, uh, you know, you need to uh, create a way of how we can combine all these things to make sure, you know, more and more universities are able to teach those students. Mm -hmm. So two years back, uh, two organizations, one is the Open Source Geospatial Organization, uh, uh, Special Foundation and the International Cartographic Association, we came together and, uh, as, and had a M M M M MOU to look into ways of how we can work together to enable more students to learn uh, geospatial science. And the way we did work, we didn't have any money or anything, but we had a set of principles to start from, and we uh, worked on those principles. And one, one, was, one of the key principles was to in five years' time, we wanted to establish five labs across the world, and that was how we started. And we had no idea how to do that, and then you know, create uh, you know uh, e-learning platforms and uh, create collaboration opportunities and things like that. And at the time, two years back, you know, we had no idea how we were going to do it. But once we set up that uh, uh, mechanism, you know, we started moving ahead. And just to brief introduction, ICA, the International Cartographic Association. It's the world authority body for uh, cartography and GI, geographic information science for those of you who don't, don't know it. And it has a long history. It, has, it was established around 50 years back. And it, has, it is a, a top scientific, it is one of the uh, top down uh, organizations. It is run by uh, different commissions, uh, all, uh, uh, and it's, it's a global international organization. Uh, so, uh, and the, the main mission is to you know, create more and more scientific publications in uh, geospatial science. So that's the main objective of the ICA. And Open Source Geospatial Foundation is quite, uh, quite young. It's, you know, we celebrated our eighth birthday this year, so it's quite uh, much more younger. But again, you know, it, uh, as you can see, you know, it has it's been brought together a l l large community of volunteers for you know, whole lots of projects from web mapping to desktop applications to libraries to uh, catalogs and different kind of stuff, you know, so you, all, which all the users can download for free. And just some stats, and you know, I was just looking for the community. And, these stats are much older, it's 2008. And one of the interesting things for me is, you know, the number of contributors, even in 2008, is amazing. You know, how many, all these projects have huge uh, number of contributors. And if you think from a perspective, uh, you know, it's a, it's a huge, uh, yeah, now it's, you know, I could imagine just, you know, the, you know more, more times from that figure. But what it shows is, you know, Open Source Geospatial Foundation brought together this very high impact community together for the long term uh, jo joining together. And for us, you know, for me personally, you know, why I want to this is, is the social responsibility of why we want to make all this available for people uh, who have no resources. And you know, making resources, including software and data, openly available gives opportunity for knowledge to be shared widely, and it increases the learning opportunities. And good examples in our network is this an example from Uruguay in South America, uh, where they run this project called GVSIG Batovi. You know, and this is for school students across uh, Uruguay. And you know, Uruguay is a not it's a it's a poor country, but I was very amazed by how they into you know how they used uh, you know, uh, free software and free tools to enable a whole generation of their students now, starting from primary and secondary schools, to start learning GIS. And this I can see replicating in you know other countries around the world where they don't have resources. You know, they can start using the technology and the resources to start uh, uh, you know, making these uh, uh, education opportunities available to you know, much, much wider students as well. And for us, you know, when we started this, we had three key aims. One was to establish a research and training opportunities in OpenGIS, and also 
The second was to build teaching and research infrastructure worldwide and provide a worldwide learning platform. And I will quickly try to you know, show you the things. But uh, the stats now, you know, we have now 17 labs established as of today. You know, we started with the vision of having five labs in five years. You know, so most of our labs are in Europe and North America mostly, but we are hoping to have more labs in Africa and Asia as well. So it's quite, you know, even this was a uh, six months back screenshot of the labs in Europe. You know, now again, it's much, much different as of now. So more and more universities in uh, Europe are, you know, establishing the open source geospatial labs so that they can teach, uh, teach the students. And there are different uh, reasons. So one is strategic level, you know, research level for universities, you know, the, for the teaching, and also for long-term sustainability, attracting research funding. So, and social responsibility. So it, you know, it uh, caters to all these kind of different uh, levels for the universities who want to wish to invest in open source geospatial education. And for me, you know, it's you know, open GIS is key for innovation. It's, you, you should, it's, it's a bringing together of different kind of aspects. You know, you have the standards play a key role because you know, it's interoperability is very important. And again, you know, open data, big big player in this because you know, for example, UK, I can tell you know, the data.gov.uk was a big initiative from the government to start you know creating innovation. And again, there is like top-down approaches and bottom-up approaches, like things like OpenStreetMap. You know, so these are all you know happening at the same time, which which adds a really new dimension of what we are doing, and it's a, like a multiplier effect. And obviously, you know, having open source software and open education and all these kind of things when they come together, you know, it creates magic, and that's what what is happening. And you know, this is in Nottingham. You know, we set up the labs. You know, for us, you know, we wanted to train you know government, uh, government organizations, you know, other university staff, so that they can then start you know teaching their students uh, you know open source GIS. And we, uh, for us, you know, the first stage was you know running workshops for these uh, uh, for different kind of open source GIS. And also, like for us, PhD students were very important. We set up summer schools, bring together you know staff from different universities as well as uh, PhD students to give them uh, training in you know two week kind of training on you know w uh, different kind of ge uh, geospatial technologies and this is one example of and this is now running in the fifth year now again this was started in 2010 so you can see how it has evolved over the time and also we run strategic training programs for organizations like the united nations you know and this was the example we did for so we bring together un staff because again un is a international organization they have operations all over the world in poor countries. They need to make sure they have access to, you know, those uh, people need access to software and things like that. So we work with them uh, to make sure, you know, we train the UN staff so that they can then train their staff uh, for uh, teaching as well. And just, I just thought I'll give some examples. And this example from uh, our first lab, which was established in South, Af South Africa in the University of Pretoria. And this, again, again, is for countries in Africa. You know, this is a big, you know, they can now have, really have an opportunity to teach the students new special science, which, you know, which, which five years back, you know, which is never possible because of the high cost of proprietary software. And that's what we want to do. And even Poland, you know, we have a very strong connections with Poland. And I actually visited colleagues at the UN Grid uh, here in Warsaw uh, six months back. And they have been doing amazing stuff using open source GIS software, you know, following the inspired directives and things like that. Plus. You know, they have set up something called GIS for schools in Poland, which is amazing how they, uh, everything is, uh, you know, if you go to the website and uh, search for GIS for schools, I was really inspired by the things they have been doing here as well. And we also run free webinars, which all of you, you know, anybody interested to know, you know, so we have labs across the world, you know, so we have colleagues from NASA or in, uh, you know, different universities, BGS, British Geological Survey. They all, you know, every, every month, you know, there is a free webinar, so we, anybody can watch, and this is watched by thousands of people. So, you know, it's, it gets ideas across, and so, you know, if you are interested, you know, you can just subscribe to that, and you can uh, hear about what our labs across the world are doing, you know, what kind of research they are doing. And also, I would like to uh, point to some of the works, uh, you know, some of the interesting stuff. So, you know, uh, we, uh, some of our colleagues, uh, Maria Brovili and others, are running this NASA World Wind Europa Challenge. Uh, I don't know if you know about World Wind. It is an open source uh, equivalent to Google Earth. And you know, there is a, this is the second year it is running. And last year, I could show you, you know, all these are student projects which they brought together. And these are some of the examples. You know, so you know, they brought together, you know, very very different kind of uh, interesting projects together. And I will, uh, you know, welcome any of you who are interested to join this year, you know, to start, you know, applying for these kind of uh, competitions because this helps build community and also, you know, uh, uh, furthers uh, scientific thinking among, among uh, many uh, many students as well. And the last thing for I uh, will just quickly explain is, you know, we have been one of the key things we wanted to do was to develop a global learning platform so that you know every materials are in Creative Commons license. So we want uh, teachers from across the world to start using. Uh, not just the software, but also the learning materials so that they can 
teach their students. And we set up something called ELOGEO, which is the e-learning for open geospatial, which is a repository where you know, uh, we, uh, all the learning materials have been uploaded. And then students, teachers can then uh, not just use it, because it's all in Creative Commons. They can you know, modify it, uh, change it, plus you know, they can translate it to other languages and things like that. And this, again, just one year old, the ELOGEO, but uh, you know, it has been, you know, because it has contributed, it has a lot of uh, other colleagues started contributing. Now it's one of the uh, key kind of uh, platforms for us to build our learning repository. And I will also, uh, you know, uh, like to say that in, in this year, uh, in September, we, because we run an open source GIS conference every year, and this year we have decided to have an open science 2004 in Nottingham uh, to, uh, to make sure, you know, we build synergies with open education, open science, and all these kind of different communities, but trying to think how we all can contribute to the global sharing of knowledge. And I hope, you know, at least some of you will come to uh, Nottingham to, and then share your ideas as well. And, you know, uh, Again, this is really good. This is happening this week because this week is actually, I don't know how many of you know about it, but it's Open Education Week. And this is very important for us because the whole, you know, whole reason why we started it was for us, you know, for me, was, you know, the education is the main kind of component principle of all this. And, you know, we, have, we are strongly supporting this initiative, you know, uh, even through our ELO Geo. But, you know, I really hope more and more people start, you know, trying to think about, you know, uh, disseminating this information widely and getting more and more people uh, you know using it and as well so what i really hope was you know give you a uh, brief uh, a sharing of my experiences of how we have been working in the geospatial education area and that's what you know i really hope uh, you know more universities across the world you know will start thinking about how they can use open uh, open kind of philosophy or open principles in their education as well thanks very much